Hi friends, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. So in today's video, we are going to take a deep dive into cross hatching with your walking foot on your domestic sewing machine. And if you don't have a walking foot, it can still be done. Just remember you'll have to go slower because the walking foot helps the the fabric feed in equally as you stitch. So the feed dogs come up and the, the teeth on the walking foot go down at the same time. And then they like, you know, I can't make that motion with my hands, but <laughs> that's how it works. So again, we're going to take a deep dive into it because I have been requested by many of you out there how I do this. So let's get started on a small project. And I'm going to tell you right now, Small projects are the best for this because on a domestic machine, if you're going to do a supersized project, like say a lap quilt, and you want to cross hatch that, that's a lot of marking. And that also <laughs> is you should start and stop. And I'll get to that while I show you. But oh, I can't get those words out. You know, like if it was a big quilt, you would start thread here, take that stitch all the way down, stop it there, break thread, and come back to the beginning again, and start and stop, because there's no turning the project as much as we do with the little projects. The little projects make it easy. So, you know, uh, table runners, table toppers, um, placemats, uh, just little projects like that, cross hatching, is a lot easier because you can turn the project multiple times really easily without having to break thread. So that's what I'm going to show you is cross hatching without breaking thread, how to mark it, how to sew it and have fun with it because it's a cute little project and you want it to look good and cross hatching actually makes big empty spaces look the best. So big square blocks or long section of nothing. It looks really good with cross hatching. It gives a definition and character, which is what we're looking for as quilters to give our projects a little bit of, oomph, you know, <laughs> so let's get started with the marking. For marking this project, you're going to need some kind of marking utensil that kind of stays. So, I mean, we have a Hera marker, which you could create those dashes and you could probably see them. They might hold most of the way. But the more you fold this up and bunch your project up, the more your hair and marker markings are going to go away. So what I recommend is something that you can see. So we have just a, a chalk pencil or tailor pencil or a smaller tailor pencil that has the smaller one has like a really big tip and one has a really small tip, as you can see. Um, but because my project is white, they do make other chalk marking utensils, by the way. But my project has got white on it, so we're going to go with a friction pin. Now make sure that it is a friction pin that actually disappears. So take and mark something up that's white, and then take it over to your iron and put an iron on it. Because some people say that some of these friction pins, uh, different brands, but this is the, the friction brand, you know, the Frixon, I don't know how it's said, but... Um, make sure that that marking goes away, because some say it comes back with cold. So far, I have not ever had that problem. So I have marked on white fabric before and I drew a lot of stuff. I erased it with my iron, which is it's heat erasable, and then stuck it in the freezer and the markings never came back. And then I ironed it again, moved it around, wiggled it, washed it, all those kind of things on my little testers. And I've never had a problem. So this is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to use a blue because I'll be able to see it on this project. So we're going to start off with our marking utensil. And then you need a big ruler. Now, I just so happen to have this one handy right here. This is my quilter select. It's eight and a half by 24 inches. We need this because this project is a lot longer. But if you have a smaller project, you might want to use a smaller uh, ruler. You know, it just depends on how big your project is. But mine's quite large and I need this to reach from corner to corner because again, cross hatching is cross. 
You're making a cross over and over again. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up corner to corner and I'm gonna leave room just a little bit for the tip of my pen and I'm gonna put it on here corner to corner and I am going to mark my line just like this. And I'm hoping that you can see it with the blue. So there's line one. I'm gonna to go to the opposite side now, line my ruler up from corner to corner, and I'm going to mark this. Just like that, from corner to corner. So now I have my cross, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is, since this is an eight and a half by 24 ruler, the half mark is on this side. I only need the one inch mark because I'm going to do one inch. You can do whatever number you want, but I'm doing one inch cross hatch. So I'm going to line my one inch line on my blue line that I previously marked. And I am going to draw that. Then I'm going to go to that mark that I just made and put my one inch line on that. And cross it. And then I'm just going to continue doing this until this whole thing is marked this way. So I'm gonna go one inch at a time. One inch, one inch, one inch, that's my number. All right, so once you have that whole side marked, turn your project, just one turn, and we're gonna go that next one. So I'm going to line up my line on a one inch mark going the opposite way. And I want this whole thing marked up because it makes it so much easier. I don't want to rely on my foot of my walking foot. You know, I don't want to rely on that. And I don't have the marking, the metal thing that comes out of my walking foot. And I don't actually have one example to show you guys what I'm talking about. So let's see if I can show you. Here is a walking foot for the Juki TL2010Q. It doesn't have any holes here to put the rod in that has the markings. But on other machines, there's a hole in the back and it, a rod slides through it and it has this like L-shaped unit that sticks off of here. Let me see if I can find an example. Hold your horses. All right, here's the example. So here's a walking foot for my average domestic sewing machine, which is like my little brother machine. See that hole that it has? Here's this L-shaped metal thing, okay? This goes in said hole and you can adjust it from this piece right here to the needle, however you want it. And then you can follow this to, on your previous stitch to create your lines. I don't have that on the Juki, so I can't use this, but this is actually a good tool for a walking foot to have this on here so that you can follow your previous line with this. And it can go on either side, and then it sits on this way on that side, and you could go on either side. So if you're stitching to the right or if you're stitching to the left, you could just put your walking foot hook in there and adjust it this way, and just hope that you never move it throughout the process because I actually hit it once and I knocked it off and I was like, oh my God, I gotta remeasure. <laughs> But there, you can measure this way with this kind of walking foot. All right, so I'm just gonna get back to my markings and I will meet you when I turn it again. All right, turn the project one turn again and we're gonna go again to the right. Marking this all up. And if you're left-handed, go to the left. Okay, one more turn. And also, my little project is uh, spray-basted down just in case you were curious how it's staying so nicely, I used spray base because uh, safety pins would get in the way at this point. So that's why I'm not doing it that way.
All right, once the project is marked in the section that you want to crosshatch, it's time to take it over to the machine and show you how to continuously do this without breaking thread. But if you were doing a larger project and you marked it and you're ready, just know on your larger project, you have to break thread because it's going to be really hard to, you know, fold this up and, and move it around. But you would mark your lines exactly the same on a larger project. And then what you would do is you would start here, bring up your bobbin thread, start right here, stitch all the way down, and then back stitch, and then pull your thread away and bring your thread to the top. So that way you don't get a bunch of, um, what are they called, thread nests underneath. And then you would come back up here, start again, and do this. Come back up here, start again, do this. So on and so forth until the project is done both directions. <laughs> but this way we're going to do this. We're going to start here, cross over, back stitch. I mean, not back stitch, cross over, come back, follow this. Come around, come up this way, that way, come in, go down this way. And it will be eventually filling every single line with thread. So let's go over to the machine. I'm going to first make a stitch all the way around this because I'm going to be doing a lot of moving and turning and, and shuffling. So I'm going to do a stitch on this outer side first to make sure everything stays nice, which it should because, again, it's spray basted, and then come in and do this. So let's get started. So I'm using red thread for this project. What I'm going to do is slide my thing, my project right here, and I'm going to bring my thread to the top. So I'm just going to put my needle down move it away, find that tail. It's really hard with the walking foot to grab this little tail. So if you have like little tweezers or something, it's easier, there we go, right there. So I have both my bobbin thread and my top thread right here. I'm just gonna hold it in place, put my needle in the corner where I wanna start and then drop my foot. And this whole project goes easier if you have a knee lift on your machine. But if you don't, it's okay. So I'm going to stitch with a three millimeter, three millimeter stitch according to my Juki. And that is because it looks more like 10 stitches per inch, which is what I would do on a long arm. So I'm going to just stitch right here in the ditch all the way around first. And you can see that this thing, if, if your walking foot is attached correctly, the bar on it is actually hooked to the uh, up and down of the needle, which brings those teeth up and down and the feed dogs up and down at the same time. So they're grabbing, walking, grabbing, walking, grabbing, walking. At the same exact time. Okay, so I'm gonna come right here to this corner, use my knee lift, pivot, and stitch down the stitch. And if it's not exactly in the ditch, then oh well, because sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. I look at the needle and I watch this ditch at the same time and I try to keep the ditch in the center of the uh, walking foot itself in that center area. One more stitch, pivot. One more stitch, pivot. And yes, I do this kind of fast. Here's my starting threads right here. I'm gonna go ahead and snip those right now. I'm gonna come right up to this end. I'm gonna back stitch and forward stitch. I'm gonna lift my needle I'm going to pull the project away and you can see I have my top thread. I'm going to snip it and my bobbin thread. I'm going to snip that so that you don't have any thread tails in the bob in the bottom, any uh, bunching or anything like that. It really helps to do that. All right, let's start with this continuous line. Oops, I put my foot on the pedal and I didn't mean to. Let's grab that thread. We're going to make a nice long tail so that we can pull these up really easily. And we're going to start 
right here on this corner because it's right here in front of my face. And I'm really sorry about the lighting. Let's fix that. All right, so here we are right here. I'm gonna stick my needle down and then up. Pull the project away and pull up that bobbin thread, okay? Some machines require you to have the foot down to pull the needle, I mean, pull the thread up, but this one doesn't, so. All right, so I'm gonna stick this down and make sure that my needle is where I want it to be, right there. And now I'm gonna stitch forward and back real quick and stitch on that line. Once I get to the other end of that line, I'm going to pivot my project. And again, this is where having lots and lots of uh, little projects to do this, because you could fold it in here. You have to have lots and lots of patience is where I was going with that. I'm gonna snip away that starter thread and we're gonna move on by stitching in the ditch now, back to the start. So there's my 100% corner. Turn the whole project all the way. Oops, see, this is what happens when I, we're gonna undo those stitches real quick because I broke thread accidentally by touching my foot on the pedal. My foot, when I film videos, my pedal is in a position that um, is kind of really close to my body. All right, so we're gonna pull that bobbin Back to the top again. We're gonna put this needle down right there in the corner. And we're gonna stay away from the foot pedal until I'm ready to stitch. So right now I'm just kind of folding the project in front of me. I'm gonna, because I, you know, had to break thread for a second there, I'm gonna back stitch. But here we go on this first line. So follow your line. And I do this rather quickly, but you could take your time. If you're not using a walking foot, then I definitely recommend taking your time. All right, so now we're coming up on that other corner. I'm gonna leave that needle down. I'm gonna turn and pivot. I'm gonna come down to this little corner, tiny line that you can't even see right now. I'm gonna stitch in the ditch till I get to that line right there. I'm gonna turn the whole project again. So it's best, like I said, little projects so that you can fold up and maneuver. I'm gonna stitch now on that line, right to the edge, and then I'm gonna to come to this ditch right here, this ditch, and I'm gonna stitch down it until the next line. So here's my next line. I'm gonna pivot the whole project, lift the foot with your knee lift and then I'm gonna kind of fold it and we're gonna stitch down this line now. Okay, once you're in this ditch, lift your needle, I mean not your needle, your foot, so you can either reach behind and lift your foot and pivot the project, or you can use your knee lift. Now I'm gonna stitch in this stitch till my next line, which is one that's gonna cross over this way that you can't see, but you will in a second because we're gonna turn the whole project again until that line is able to be straight stitched right here. Now you can either pivot and go down this way. Either way you go, you're still going to get back to that same spot. I always go back this way so that I'm doing one row at a time. So I'm gonna come back in this ditch to my next line, pivot the whole project, and follow this line down. Here in the ditch, leave needle down, pivot project, come down a little bit, hit that next line, turn the whole thing again, come down it. In the ditch, come straight down to your next line. Right there, lift your foot. 
Make sure you move your project out of the way so you're not stitching your actual uh, backing fabric in. Come right to that ditch, pivot, come down the line to my next one. So you can see I have a line right here that's back there I'm pointing at. Come to that, pivot project. And come down that line. Again, I'm keeping my line in the center of this right here. So as you can see, the center of the foot has an opening. I'm keeping my line in that opening. One more stitch. I'm going to go all the way around this way. I'm going to stitch in this ditch to my next line. I always go back so that way all those center lines get done at the same exact time. Now I'm going to go down this way. Again, that line, no matter how fast I stitch, I'm keeping that line in the center as best as possible. Right up to the ditch, turn the project, stay in the ditch to the next line. Turn project all the way, work on next line. Come down. Now I'm on this one, adjusting my project as I go. I'm not pushing or anything. I'm actually just holding my hands really nicely on here. Um, I'm not trying to like shove my project through. I'm just letting the feed dogs do the, 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 their work. But I do help guide it using the, my hands on the sides. One more stitch. I'm going to come down this way. Like I said, the knee lift makes this so much easier. So I highly recommend if your machine came with one, try using it. Get yourself used to it. All right. Now for this one. This is where I said I go all the way around so that way I can come down. I never go the opposite way, even though you can if you want to. You'll just be backtracking a lot. And I think there's even more turning that way. I'm going to get rid of these corner threads real quick now that I can see them and they're not like, you know, annoying me being there. All right. Stitching in that line. And then pivot. Come down to the next line. Sometimes it's just like three or four stitches. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the camera. It is an awkward uh, angle for me. <gasps> Come down. All right, one more stitch right there. Pivot back this way just a little bit. Refold project. Come down to the next line. And it's just a constant spin around.
Okay, so we're coming up on the last pass. So I get to right here, come down to that next line, do that next little corner thing, pivot around it, go to the corner, and then we're going to go down that center line. Just like this, and I'm gonna come around, up, down, over, and then when I get here, I'm gonna back stitch, backtrack, and then go all the way around without breaking my thread. So I'm gonna come into my corner, do my little corner. Right here. Now that I'm in that corner, I'm going to stitch down. Now that I've done it, and now I'm going to go all the way around the whole entire border piece right here, this first one. Stitch in the ditch, completely all the way around that. Make sure the needle is down every time you pivot. I tend to uh, press that dang foot button so often. One more side. And now I have gone all the way around. Let me make sure. Yes. Okay. This is it right here. So I'm going to back stitch, lift my needle, bring my project away. And I don't even know where all of my snips and stuff are disappearing to. Snip the thread, come to the bottom, and snip the thread. And you can see just a tiny little bit from the back stitching, but honestly, there is no starts and stops it's one continuous stitch so you don't get any nesting of um the threads you know which happened on the back if you were to start and stop the whole thing so now i'm going to go ahead and finish this project by sewing all in this section now and then we'll uh meet you at the table or at the ironing board to get rid of these lines
Here we are at the iron and I just want to show you, you can still see all those blue lines. You can see every single one of them. We're going to get rid of that. So if you are using a polyester batting, if you used a polyester batting, just know that you're going to flatten it out now because the polyester is going to get really flat instead of being puffy like the puffy look you're looking for. I have an 80-20, it should still keep some of the puff because it's 80% cotton and 20% polyester. But just know if you're using the 100% polyester that you're gonna get rid of all your little puffs. And that's not nice because <laughs> we're going for the definition here. So all you have to do is just do this with the iron and it gets rid of all those blue lines. Every marking that I made will now be gone. Mark be gone. That's what it should be called. Oh, got some down right there in the center. Just make sure I get them all. Typically, I just like iron the whole entire thing while I'm like right here. Kind of makes it easier to make sure that I get every last marking off of here. No markings left that I can see. There we go. You can still see I have my little puff still. And if you give it a shake out like this, it might bring it back to life even more. You see that? Gives it little puffs. Now off to trimming and binding and this project will be complete. So hopefully you found that that is actually super easy to do. Now the long arm wise, I still have yet to get that down with the cross hatching, you have to use rulers, but I still have yet to get it down where I can continuously do one stitch without having to come back. I can continuously go one way, but I want to figure out how to continuously go this way, this way, this way, this way, and then back, and then back. and. That one is that one's a challenge for me but on a domestic this is what it is this is what it looks like it is so easy to cross hatch the middle of these these little projects you could like i said do it on a table runner placemats uh you can even do this on um uh mug rugs you know those kind of projects it really looks great see looks great looks super great and on the back you could see it I doubt me holding this looks really good, but I'll take an insert of some finished pictures. But it was so easy that I decided to cross hatch another project. Right? 
<laughs> all while, you know, doing this whole thing. So there's what another one looks like, a simple crosshatch. From the back, you can see it really shines. It's really easy. And if you were curious when I was doing the outer part uh, continuously as well, that's a piano keyboard that I do continuously on here. On a long arm, that is really easy. Just really go out, up, in, down, up, and down, out, up, and down, up, you know, like seriously. But on a domestic, there's a lot of twists and turns to continuously do it and not have to keep starting and stopping because I really don't want thread nests on the back of my projects from starting and stopping, starting and stopping constantly. It doesn't, I mean, you could already see my sloppy stitching because I used red thread, but you cannot see any starts and stops, which is good. So that's, it's, it's lessened the amount of what the back looks like. So you could almost have the back up facing you. So there's that. I love it. I love both of these. Look at that. I'm all ready for spring and summer. Look at me. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, there's probably going to be some more videos popping up at the end of this screen. And here is my finished projects, the pictures version.